Ah, oh, good morning, my hearties, dinky do. Tis just me, Scotty McClue, and it's Tuesday morning. Nothing gets past me, I can tell you that. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our mon our uh, Tuesday morning pop-up, our morning pop-up, and we are live on Facebook Live. I'm the world's top broadcaster, I'm the first lord of the internet, and I'm the world's most humble man. You can't really beat all that, can you? So there'll be no trumpet blowing on here by me, Scotty McClue, or anyone else. Well, no, that's not true. You can blow as many trumpets as you like. The wonderful Jane MacDonald is watching. Terrific lady. Jack Merlees has joined us. Jack, you were on first. Thank you, Scotty, says Graham McKelly. Zareem says, hello, Scotty. How are we? We're very well, Graham. Thank you, from Finlay Morris in capitals. Good Finlay. We like capitals. I capitalize every word of what I write usually. And somebody said, why do you capitalize every word of what you write on Facebook? And I said, because every word I write is important. Yes, is that fair enough? The wonderful Sean Smith's watching, Sean Smythe is watching. Dinky do. I will get that right, Sean. I promise you. Stuart McLean's joined us, Larry Donaldson. Jack Arthur. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Jack. Lovely to have you with us and welcome to our Tuesday pop up. Uh, Dinky do, Scotty, is this Stuart McLean? Excellent morning, Scotty. Can you say hello to my son, Fraser? And four kisses. For Diane Marchand. Lovely to have you, Diane. Bon chance, chérie. Uh, and good morning, Fraser. A very good morning to you. Give your mum a lovely big hug. There we are. Dinky do, Scotty, says Stuart McLean. Absolutely. Good morning, Scotty. And Dinky do. Excellent stuff. And that's from Marcus. Marcus G. Uh, wonderful Russell Robertson. Dinky do. Dinky do, Russell. Three years. My goodness me. Incredible. Um, now, Finlay Morris is getting everybody up, so I'll see some names going through. I won't read them all out, of course. The wonderful Margaret Sheldon. Good morning, Scotty. I hope you're well today. I am, Margaret, yes. Uh, no tie today. I hope you don't mind. There's certainly no disrespect meant. Uh, there we are. Finlay's getting them all up. Fantastic. Jack Arthur's getting them up. Now, guys, I've got my trusty Errol Gray in my small cup. Oh, it's just, it's lush. Have you had a cup of tea this morning yet? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, that's lovely. That's absolutely phenomenally fantastic. And I believe a lot of you are doing a lot of home baking. So uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to hand it round because of the epidemic. But uh, it's lovely to know that people are home baking. Three minutes late, getting the notice again, Scotty. Who was that? Um, John. John Jones, yes. I think you're going to have to know that we're on at 10 o'clock weekday mornings and tune in at three minutes to 10 and then get your notice. Nice to be casual sometimes. I think so, Margaret, yes. Uh, I'm very rarely casual. I'm usually quite formal because I'm always doing something that requires a degree of formality. So very often the tweed jacket and uh, the heather mixture tie are on, you know, and uh, all that sort of stuff. But there we go. Uh, Nibby, Nikki McHugh says, good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Nikki. How are you this morning, Nikki McHugh? Lovely to have you with us and a big dinky do to you. Fantastic. Jack Mellies, Scotty, do you think it's a good idea to send some school children back to school? Jack, I'm not sure because our young people are very vulnerable. And also, um, there's going to be a lot of people around the school. If you think about it, if you send everyone back to school, you're touching banisters and things that maybe another thousand people have touched that morning. Even if your school had, say for talking sake, your school had 500 pupils, they would only need to go up and down the stairs twice. And that's just, and you think how often you move about in a school between classes. So it's all that kind of stuff. So somebody would have to be sterilizing and hand sanitizing all the time. And there would have to be terrific distances in a classroom. You think 30 people going into a classroom. Oh, uh, 
so there we are. So perhaps we leave it a wee while till we see what happens, because there could be a second wave of this awful thing. You see, because something doesn't look dangerous when you're dealing with uh, an, a, a pandemic and an epidemic and you're dealing with germ, uh, you're dealing with virus, then you can't see it. So everything looks fine. I mean, there was a, a, let me just tell you, everything can look fine. There was a terrible story in, I think it was 1885, and a Clyde steamer went to see an explosion in a quarry in Loch Fyne. And the ship sounded her hooter, and the quarry sounded its hooter, and the dynamite blasted the quarry. And people used to love to go ashore and uh, look at what the great big pieces of rock that had fallen down. And this day they did that. They'd come from, I think, Glasgow and Gurukh and all the rest of it. And this day they went and they inspected the quarry. They went ashore when it was safe. <clears throat> and a wee dog collapsed. And then people started to collapse. And without going into detail, that boat went home that night with a lot of dead people on board, taking them back because there had been a gas that had got out and people hadn't seen it. And because they'd been running, yes, to see the explosion, they were huffing and puffing and they were drawing this into their lungs and it caused their death. Terrible thing. So I'm just, the reason I'm recounting that story is that um, if you can't see something, it doesn't mean it's not dangerous, right? That's the important thing. There's danger all around out there, but we have to try and not become paranoid. We need to look after our mental state as well as our physical state and our spiritual state. There you are. Uh, Moira McClung's just joined us. Welcome, Moira. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo from me, Scotty McClue. Can we all tell 10 to tell 10? I know we've just started, but it looks to me like it's share, share, share time. Yes, 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 my lars. Sharing for old McClue to let everybody know it's on because, as I say, you can have the finest program in the world. I want that little figure up around the 50, 100 mark this morning. And it's up to you to do that. I can only do so much. Yes. Send us, yes, send us lots of smileys and tapty taps and hearts and all that sort of stuff. Molly Scotty, you're looking sharp today. Thank you very much. Yes. My mother used to say, oh, you're so sharp, you'll cut yourself. <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah, Molly Scotty, yes, indeed. Lovely cap you've got on this morning, Scotty. Well, I like to um, change caps every so often, you know, in my accoutrement. There we are, accoutrement. Finley Morris, thank you, do. Can't get the flour for baking. They're always sold out. While I was watching a flour man the other day, I nearly said florist. <laughs> I was watching a flour man the other day uh, at the mill. And he was saying that, you know, they're working to capacity. And the flour packers, the wee bags that it comes in, they're working to capacity as well. So you can really only go as fast as it can be produced. But the mills are grinding and grinding and grinding at the flour. So there we go. Incredible. Uh, Billy Hunter, Jim Higgins. I would imagine the bread mix is sold out pretty quickly because... You've got time for home-baked bread. If you're self-isolating or you're isolating, you've got time to bake a loaf. Whereas before you go, what's the time? Oh, seven o'clock, I'll need to away. You know, it's all that stuff. Andrew Fife uh, is getting everybody up. Robert Dean's getting a shout. Finley's shouting on everybody good stuff. Uh, Moira says... Uh, good morning, Scotty. I hope you're keeping safe and well from Moora in Port Seton. I know Port Seton well. I've walked along the beach. I used to stay in East Lothian, and uh, I would very often just stop and get the dog out of the back of the car, and we'd just go for a walk along the beach. What a lovely, lovely life. And, of course, is it Port Seton here, the wee fish shop? Wonderful, wonderful. And there we go, Steve Tate's watching. Love to East Lothian, Moira. 
VJ Dukerum saying dinky do David Diston. Guys, we must share. Come on. Let's just settle down. We need to get sharing. I want this number up to the 50s. So if you all share, that will help. There should be a way, way up there. But we know that the platform doesn't like let everyone see it. That's the thing. 2.8 billion should be able to see this program. That's the thing. I just, I'm learning wee bits about all this. Do you know what I mean? You just assume that uh, the reason everybody's not joining us is because they don't want to, when in actual fact they don't know it's on. Oh, my goodness me. What I'll do, I'll share to the big Scotty McClue page. I think that's probably best. And if you can all do the same, that'd be brilliant. Here we go. Just bear with me and I'll get this shared out there. It's so important, guys. See, this is different from every other piece of social media. We're not fighting each other on Facebook here. We're working together. So if everybody pulls together, I'll just put live now. If everybody pulls together, um, then we can really make something of this. But everybody's telling me to move platforms. And they're saying to go on to one of everybody had only fans. Have you heard about that one? So there we are. And there's YouTube, of course. So there we are. But uh, this is an excellent platform. David Distant, Finder Morris. I think we should write this year off, Scotty, and start again in 2021. <clears throat> yes, and I would quite like if the government just wrote off everybody's debts. Just said, that's it. Mortgage again. Just get rid of all that. Right? And then we start again. You know, I mean, I think that would be would be quite a nice thing to happen, wouldn't it? Um, so uh, anyway, we're thinking about that. But somebody said that the most useless item at the moment is a 2020 planner, a year planner. You know, incre incredible stuff. Guys, see if we get this number up to 50. It's at 40 just now. Has everybody shared? Tam Peden's getting every day up. Morning, Tam. Lovely to have you, Jim Panton's with us. Scotty, what's your thoughts on the Greenock Catman? Man or myth? I think people have actually seen the Catman. So this is a gentleman that lives a bit like a cat, but we'll not go into that because, uh, you know, I don't want to, uh, um, I don't want to be holding somebody up in front of everybody when they're not there to discuss it themselves. So there we are. So if we had the Catman, um, discussing it, that would be one thing. I've seen, I'm sure I've seen a YouTube of the Catman. I was very concerned when I saw a report on the television last night that uh, Inverclyde is having a very tough time for coronavirus. There we are. But I saw everybody out exercising. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people out exercising on the Esplanade, which although it's a very big, wide street, there seemed to be rather a lot of people at the one time how are we going to separate people between classes? They're also talking about only having five people on a school bus at one time. It would take around 50 or more buses to take the children to school. Jack, the only thing is, at the moment, the schools are starting to get into a fair bit of homeschooling. Some schools are right up to um, a pretty full timetable, sending stuff out all the time. And... Um, What's very interesting about this is um, it would be a logistical nightmare to, to, to send everybody back. You would have queues. Could you imagine a lunch queue, everybody with a mask on, standing um, at least two meters apart? Could you imagine little ones forgetting the social distancing and doing what they've always done to their pal? pulling them and shoving them and tapping them in the shoulder and all that sort of stuff. Logistical nightmare. Colin Coco Stewart is watching Dinky Doo. Colin, lovely to have you with us. The wonderful Wayne Smith is watching Dinky Doo, Wayne. And um, Tam's getting everybody up. Fantastic. Marcus is getting everybody up. Mark Kelsey, Sir Mark Kelsey is watching. Ended up getting a mountain bike. So there we are, says Mark Kelsey. Uh, Saracen, any good cycle routes, Scotty? Well, there's stacks and stacks of cycle routes. I had a great uncle who didn't drink. 
and he was a member of the Greenock Abstainers Cycling Club. And I once came across from about 1900 a cycling map of Scotland. Is that not amazing? So there you are. So it's all doable. And Susan Forrest, David Lafferty and Jeff Bernstein are all watching. Steen or Stein, Jeff? Morning, Scotty, says Tam. Morning, Tam. Lovely to have you with us. How was Brecky this morning? Oh, Graham McCallie. Brown toast. We had a panic earlier in the week. The toaster packed in. Now, it shouldn't have packed in because the thing's barely 50 years old. And um, I thought to myself, what, what can be wrong? Please don't tell me we need to replace our old friend, the toaster. And um, I did everything, emptied the crumb tray, the lot. No, it wouldn't go down. And then I found out it wouldn't stay down. That was the problem. When you put your bread in, it wouldn't stay down. So it wouldn't stay on. Anyway, what it seemed to be, it had been turned up high. And uh, when I turned it down, it worked again. So all is well. Can you see how a little bit of good news? Can you see how every cloud has a silver lining? Look for the silver lining whenever clouds appear in the blue, because somewhere the sun is shining. And let the sun shine for you. A heart full of joy and gladness will always banish sadness and strife. So look for the silver lining and try to find the sunny side of life. What do you think? You know, there's a wee something for you this morning. Jim Panther says, Morning, Scotty. Wish you a happy cake day. Um, to Michael Love, a.k.a. The Love Boat. Still not bought around. I'm sure he has. My goodness. I remember laughing so much. I nearly bought around myself. Um, Thomas Hamilton. Good morning, pal. Share. Thanks, Tam. Brilliant share. We need to share. The pressure is on. We need to share Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, the world's most humble man, three top titles. You can't beat it. And the only reason I never played rugby for Scotland uh, or football for Scotland was um, a lack of skill and ability. Otherwise, I would have got a game. Sometimes you go along to an old firm game. I go early because sometimes the way they play, there's a chance you'll get a game, you know? That sort of idea. Right, share to a page. I sounded like a Dalek there, didn't I? Share to a page. Remember the Daleks? The only way to get away from a Dalek, I worked this out, was to go up one step. But they fly now, somebody told me. I haven't seen the Daleks for a while. Anybody seen a Dalek recently? Or is it just the way somebody speaks? I thought that was Dr. Who and the Daleks, but it's just Big Jim arriving. There we are, live now. Guys, we must share. We've got to get these numbers up. What, what can I tell you about Sunday night's show? Now, I've asked people for feedback because it is just so popular. Everybody is watching Sunday night show. Me with my rowing jacket on or my rowing jacket. Very strange. Jeff Bernstein says, Just back from the shop, Scotty. Can't get desiccated coconut anywhere. Have you got any I could borrow, Scotty? Do you know, Jeff, I'm fresh out of desiccated coconut, believe it or not. Uh, my mother used to always have a box handy because she made these wee coconut uh, slices. But uh, you've, what I'm loving is that you've spelt it properly and you must be about the only person in the world that knows how to spell desiccated properly. Very interesting. So there we go. Excellent stuff. Right, have we shared? More sharing. This has got to be shared, guys. You can't just join and not share. Um, and it's, as I say, it's different from any social media. We are in this together. This is 
highly, highly intelligent people meeting up for one hour every weekday morning, and you can come and join us, but don't bring any sweary words and don't bring any prejudice. Morning, sir. Love the Harris Tweed cap. Have a wonderful day. David Lafferty, you too, la. You are a top man. Ewan Galloway is watching. Good morning, Ewan. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome to a Scotty McClue traditional pop-up just for you on a Tuesday morning, live streaming on Facebook. There should be 2.8 billion watching this. Uh, here's Gordon Sterling putting in an appearance. Adam Fife, James Payton, Gary Mackay, Mark Fife, Andrew Fife's getting the Fife family up. We love it. And the Fife family free Fife. Uh, Scotty, I think we should get a bit of Sweetheart of Jesus on the organ today. Oh, damn. A tearjerker. You see, you've got hymns are really, I divide hymns into two or three categories. You've got um, the heartbreaker, the tearjerker uh, and the heartbreaker. And you've got the crowd please or the big one like we gave it, guide me, oh thou great Jehovah, yesterday. O oh, Amaris, O oh, Amaris, fantastic. Morning, Mr. McLean, I've got my tea, we're good to go. Rab, Rab of the Rovers, I have got mine. There's a wee question, that's, that's, that's just lush, it's delicious. Uh, it's the Earl Grey, you know, quite nice in the morning. Um, what I was going to say, good to go, uh, Roy of the Rovers. Where would we have found Roy of the Rovers? Yes, or where would we find Roy of the Rovers? Morning, Mr. Clear, got my tea, good to go. Michael Yule, there we are. Faith of our fathers, which is another beauty. Only fans... Oh, right. Okay. Oh, well, I'll not go on that time. I'll take that out. There we go. Somebody had said, why don't you go on it? But I, I hadn't realized. So there we are. Um, Scotty, I need to go and have a Zoom meeting with the boss at half past ten. Now, I haven't had a Zoom for a long time. They were lovely. Um, you know, it was out around the time of Fireball XL5. You know, that's the stuff. And um, so have a lovely Zoom meeting. So there we are. I remember saying to the ice cream lady, you know, had she got uh, a large split and she said she could only offer me two whoppers and a Zoom. So I, I chose the Zoom. So there we are. Um, Tam, dinky do, Marcella, dinky do, Eddie, dinky do, Ross is watching. Uh, I've seen Catman, but long time ago, says Andrew. Oh, right, Andrew. Fair enough. Could maybe try and find Catman and get him in the show. Well, that would be wonderful. There we are. Uh, Sean Smythe. Thank you, do. Ross Turner is watching. Craig Bell. Everybody getting a shout out. John Johnston. Welcome, welcome, welcome. George Newton. More sharing, guys. We need to share. I've just seen we need to, we need to share. We must share. Let everybody know that we are live. It's so important because otherwise people go, oh, I didn't realize Scotty McClure, I haven't heard him for years. Or the other one is, oh, I thought he was dead. You know, I was sure he was dead. You know, all that kind of nonsense. Just because they don't see you, they think you're away. George Newton's watching. Good morning, George. Thank you, do. Have we got a question for this morning? Uh, there we are, Marcus G. Big Plainsley loved his shout out yesterday, Scotty. He's not on Facebook, but he would like a shout out for Big Gary, his workmate, who's training to be a deacon in his local chapel. I saw a fabulous, fabulous mass during lockdown, and it was on BBC Scotland Sunday morning about, or maybe about three or four weeks ago, and it came from. Court Bridge, St. Augustine's in Court, St. Augustine's, sorry, in Court Bridge. And the priest was outstanding. And his deacon was outstanding. The two of them in this massive, massive church delivering mass. Fabulous, fabulous, wonderful. So there we are. 
Morning, Scotty. Hope you're hale and hearty. George Newton. I am certainly hale and hearty, dear boy. No doubt about it. Um, stop tagging me, uh, says Eddie Cairns to Tan. There we are. Can you put the Australian hat on for Robert Dean? Thanks. Finley, if Robert's watching, we can do the hat. Right, the hat, guys. Quick change, excuse me, my clue's going for a quick change. Over to the dressing up box, and I'll put on my jackaroo. <laughs> there we are, good day. Good day, cobbers. Great to have you with us. Welcome to Scotty McClue from Down Under. So there you go. So I hope that all the Brucies and Sheilas are watching this morning. And I say fair dinkum and fair dinky do to every single one of you. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Fair dinkum, cobbers. Ho, ho, quick change. Nothing gets past me. Back on with the bonnet. There we are. Sorted. Uh, you should be watching this every morning, says Tam. Quite right, Tam. Frankie McGuinness. Dinky do, dinky do, Frankie. Lovely to have you with us. Give us lots of tap, 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 de tap, tap, de tap, de tap, guys. Thumbs up. We hearts. The, the heart. I looked at that one yesterday, the one with the red in it. And yes, it's holding a wee heart. I am held. Teneo et teneo. Bit of Latin for you this morning. Teneo et teneo. I hold and I am held. Is that not beautiful? Teneo et teneo. Jim Thompson, John Johnston's reading. Hello, John. Dinky do, John Johnston. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome to the wee beer reading. So there we are. Mara McClung is getting everybody up. There we are. Who's she getting up? Louise Green, Don Swinton, and Robert Green. Fabulous stuff. Good one, Moira. Right, Gordon Sterling has the gripe of the day. Are we ready? Here we go. <coughs> Hang on. Gordon Sterling needs me to strengthen myself. Fortification. So I'll have a drop more of the Errol Grey. Oh, that's gorgeous. And we'll have a share. Sometimes I think we rush too much. Do I rush too much? Do I ever rush? There we are. And uh, we're sharing. Who are we sharing to this time? Oh, I think we'll share. Let's share to one of the big groups, guys. Well, I'll share to the Scotty McClure group. That would be fantastic. Now, can you all do me a favor and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10? Now, please, none of you do the old, ah, I'm no, I'm no sharing him and sending that in. <laughs> please do it, because then it's more enjoyable for everyone, okay? Because that's the only reason I do this. All that's in this for me is the same as what's in it for you. We get together. And we chit-chat. Love it. There we are. Wonderful. Something we do during lockdown. Right, who am I sharing to? What group am I sharing to? The Scotty McClue one. The fan group. Are you all a member of Scotty McClue fan group for fans? Very original, that. I like it. See what I just did there creatively. The Scotty McClue fan group for fans. Right, so there we go. There it is, sitting there looking beautiful, that group. Fantastic. Scotty McClue fan group for fans. There we are. And we pieced. We pieced. Uh, we say, no, we don't piece. We go live now. That'll do us. Live now. So we used to all this pasting all the time, cutting and pasting. It's an amazing language, the IT language, isn't it? You know, something came up one day, this will disable cookies. I thought, I don't want to disable cookies. We love cookies, especially the cream ones with a wee shake of icing sugar. You know, all that sort of stuff. So very, very strange language. Right. I'm just about strong enough 
to read out Gordon Stirling's piece. Gordon Stirling, the cyclists are a disgrace. They blatantly disregard the one-hour exercise rule with their trips into the Trossachs. And I remember somebody once got kicked in the Trossachs. I think it was uh, it was quite difficult. North Berwick, etc., they should be tagged. Now, that's an interesting thing. Perhaps you have to have a tag on your bicycle so the police can see how far you've gone. Or maybe... What about you have to, if you've got a bike, you need to put in a wee tachograph. What would you say, Gordon Stilling? Now, Gordon Stilling, you're a man that I would have thought would be familiar with the ins and outs of a tachograph, right? I used to, I used to have one when I drove, and uh, it was uh, a paper disc you put in and locked the speedo. Will you be celebrating 75th anniversary on Friday? George, it's only uh, 28 years of Scotty McClure. So there we are. Are you talking about VE Day? Yes, yes. I think there will be a celebration. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if anybody at all, apart from a handful of xenophobes, was keen on the old Brexit thing. But did you see when they were celebrating in Parliament Square, just a disaster, you know, I mean, just off. Terrible stuff. Why would you leave a market of 510 million people and 28 countries just to go on your Todd? You know, <laughs> Jimmy Payton, dinky you you're a big shouted on. Morning, Scotty, says the lovely Joan Johnston. Morning, Joan, and two kisses to you. Mwah, mwah. Carol Bonds is watching. Scotty, are you a football fan? And if so, what team? My, I'm not really a football fan, to be quite honest, because my dad never took me to football. He was always a gardener. And uh, he taught me other, not a gardener, Diesel. Um, a gardener in his garden, and he used to teach me engineering things and stuff like that. So we never actually went to football. So I'm not really a football fan, but what teams? Uh, I, I'm, I'm very big on the Celtic, I'm on the hoops. Uh, I'm very big on the Rangers, I'm on the chairs. I'm very big on uh, Liverpool. You'll never walk alone. Uh, very big on Everton. You know, and uh, that's sort of thing, Goodison. Um, I'm very big on the Morton. I'm very big on the Partick Thistle. I'm very big on the Saints, the St. Mirren. Um, so these are my kind of teams. Very, very big on Man U. And very big on Man City. Uh, so they're very big on Sheffield United. And very big on Sheffield Wednesday. So a guy once asked me, he said, I wonder if you'd come down and manage a Sheffield football team. What days are you free? I said, well, I can't do Wednesday. <laughs> Scotty, I've not seen Longshanks there today. Do you think we should perform a welfare check? It may be just a tick list to see that he's up and about. He was suffering a bit. He overdid it with the munchie box the other night. So, you know, a bit of kebab meat, throw in a few chips, and uh, maybe a round of pakora, uh, maybe a mixed pakora, chicken pakora, uh, and uh, lamb paratha, um, chapati, uh, papadom. You know, so he may have a beef curry. You know, when you've had a light refreshment and you get the munchies and you order a munchie box, well, I think maybe... He overplayed his hand, so he might still be recovering. But we, we hope he's okay. But you can have too big a munchie box. How often have you had somebody come and you can smell the onion and garlic as soon as they arrive? They go, oh, my, my tummy. Oh, it's just sitting there. I reckon a big curry last night, you know. And uh, was it just a curry you had? And a few pints uh, as well, you know. And uh, what gave us the the desire for the curry was 
we'd gone in and ordered a carry out with some pakora, you know, and thought, guys, why are we just stuffing ourselves with pakora when we could go and have the full bit, you know? So that was kind of how it came about. But oh, it's just, it's just sitting there. <laughs> how often have you heard that? Longshanks is watching. He knows. Longshanks is okay. Ray, big round of silent applause for Longshanks. He's here. Scotty, I'm having toasted cheese. Uh, cheese spread. The toaster's working fabby. Well, so is mine now, so don't try any of that one-upmanship, Craig. There we are. Mine's working. But um, what you can do, and I discovered, uh, a minute in the microwave with the cheese if the toaster's not working. And lovely, lovely, lovely. And you don't even need to do it. I tried the old grill. Uh, and I had to give it a wash out because the grill... Maybe it hasn't been used for about 15 years. So I tried the grill, you know, and uh, you can do one side at a time. Then bit of cheese, into my, let it melt, and then knife and fork job, actually. It might be finishing off Sunday's munchie box. Mother dead. <laughs> Tuesday morning. What did you have for your breakfast? Well, I did a kind of big munchie box on Sunday night, so... We're still finishing that. <laughs> Don't try that at home now, folks. That was for entertainment purposes. Ross Donnelly, what does Scotty take in his tea? Um, just a wee splash of milk. I've written uh, a poem. Peter Connolly was doing such good poems, and we're turning them into a rap. So I've written a poem, and it is... Go up, no, see a cow on yonder hillock. Go up and ask for some milk. But it maybe needs a wee bit of work. The same as the title. I popped up on YouTube Live doing a live stream and suddenly everybody joined me and it was late. We had, we had a few dafties on YouTube. Just young people being silly. So uh, I went on late at one night, I think it was 11 o'clock to one or something. And it was mobbed and it was absolutely heaving. And we all came on, we're discussing cars. And I said, should we have a car? Bro? What should we call it? And I came up with the idea, top clutch. I thought, no, that needs a bit of work. But somebody suggested gear knobs. So we'll maybe, we'll maybe do that. <laughs> Better late than never long, Shanks, says Andrew Fife. Absolutely. Callum McSwan. The lovely Stephanie Lavelle. Hello, Scotty, you big belter, you. Yeah. Hello, Steph. How are you? You absolute angel. There we are. Morning, long, Shanks. Remember to late, no lateness penalties for missing 15 minutes of McClue. It's punishment enough, yes. Anybody who's late to the table when McClue's on has suffered enough because they've missed a moment of Scotty McClue. And if you miss a moment of Scotty McClue, you miss a moment of life. When people say to me, are your programs, I saw them all uh, on, on YouTube there, they're, are they not kind of the same? You know, no, no two shows are ever the same. And that's why everybody joins us, because it's massive. Guys, see that wee figure in the corner? That's 31. I want that up to 100 today. So everybody gets sharing right now. <clears throat> Remember, we used to say on radio, whoever has McClure has the market, because there were quarter of a million people listening every half hour to Scotty McClure's Nightline. Just huge. Radio stations would just give their right arm for that nowadays. Uh, Stephanie Lavelle says, Catman lives here. It's my YouTube channel. There's a video of him. Poor guy, local legend. Absolutely, Steph, right? We'll get a look at that. Alistair King's watching in Fife. We love that. Morning, Scotty. Dinky-doo. Morning, Alistair. Always lovely to have you with us. So there we are. Um... Sam Peden says, Father Michael and Deacon Harper, they did my daughter's christening. Uh, it's my partner, Aaron Foy's local parish. 
Brilliant term. Well, see if you're talking to them. Can you tell them Scotty McClue's asking for them? And thank you for a beautiful maths. Absolutely outstanding. Robert Dean, dinky do a belt of Scotty, dinky do. <laughs> Cyclists should have a lifetime ban from the show, says Gordon Sterling. Do you think so, Gordon? The cyclist of today is a completely different animal to the cyclist of yesteryear. I was a cyclist of yesteryear with a green framed, gold mud guarded rally New Yorker. And look under the saddle if you've got a, a classic rally New Yorker and see if it says JD68211 stamped on it on the frame because that was stolen from my garage um, 50 years ago, all right? So so there we go. It was Nick 50 years ago from the garage. Somebody just took it. And it had a three-speed Sturmy Archer. So there we go. And I used to stand up to pedal up the hill. And I had my school uniform on, my maroon blazer, my grey flannels, I may have had clips. I don't think so. Put your socks. I used my socks just so your flannels didn't get caught, especially your flares didn't get caught in the chain or get oily or just fall to bits and pull you off your bike, just trap. So that's so I stood up to go up a hill, even quite a modest hill, and I had a three-speed Sturmy Archer. I had a Miller Dynamo for the lights back in front, you pedaled like crazy. You could actually see your way. And uh, that was, that's, it had its own white pump on it. There you go. Uh, where you learned about um, compression ignition. You put your thumb over the pump and gave it a pump. Your thumb got hot. And that was how I learned about compression ignition engines, the diesel. They are from the bicycle pump. You also had um, a chrome Water bottle holder, this was so cool, guys. And uh, a plastic, white plastic bottle in it as an accessory. You also had, the bike had cost £21, brand new. And it was an extra seven and six pins for the stand. And I remember I never really asked for anything in my life because you knew you weren't going to get it. <laughs> Yes, and um, I did manage to do a wee bit of sales on my mother and say, you know, she said, oh, I think, no, I think that's it. And I said, no, no, I didn't. what about the stand, seven and six? So she bought me the stand, seven and six pins, there we are. I think this was on my 12th birthday, and you could uh, fit the stand, great, and you could leave the bike freestanding. It just looked superb. I used to wash it and shine it up, take chrome polish round the wheels. That Nowadays, you dress up as if you're going to the moon and you see people going downhill at 50 miles an hour and things like that. You know, you see people holding up a whole line of traffic on an A-road. You know, that sort of idea. We'd just have got off and gone into the side and, Waved all the buses and the, the log, the wood lorries and everything on. The Coleman. Derek, who's watching? Nicky Graham, Nicky Graham, Dinky Do Scotty. Top of the morning to you. I'll tell a hundred to tell a hundred. Have a good day. Nicky Graham, would you not agree? Guys, tell me. Would you not agree that this show is worthy of a very, very big audience indeed? And it should be on commercial television for half an hour on a Friday night. I think so. And I'm going to talk to them about that. What you'll get, commercial television is so sophisticated now. The famous saying, if Lou Grade had been alive today, Scotty McClue would never be off our televisions. Right? Now, well, that's a good thing or a bad thing for you. It doesn't matter. It's a fact because Lou Grade was a proper showman. He ran the biggest franchise was it the biggest? I think it was the biggest franchise between him and the Bernsteins in Manchester. Lou was in Birmingham. And he was true show, showbiz and he chose the programs. The chief executive 
a lord, chose the programs because he was a proper entertainer, you know? So he would have said, Scotian, what kind of money you look for, eh? What are you looking for? I'm going to put you on. I'm going to take as much of your Scotty McClure as I can get. Call the producers. Bring them up to meet Scotty McClure. Big cigar. And that was it. And Because it was Lou that brought us the saint, the baron, the champions, raise the Titanic, ITC films. Um, what else did he bring us? Everything. All that wonderful stuff that we used to watch. Did he bring us Randall and Hopkirk, deceased? Am I right there? Um, was that part of ICT? I can't remember. Um, ITC. Um, what else did we get? We got Thunderbirds, Fireball XL5, Stingray, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterans. There's one I miss out somebody gave us last week. Joe 90. All these wonderful things. That was Lou Grade. The Muppets. Lou Grade. Fantastic guy. And now you go to ITV, they pass it down and say, oh, we'll send it out to a commissioning editor. Now they send it out to somebody who says, Oof, I'm not taking a chance on that, I'll tell you. Madness. Because... You should just be straight on there, hit the ground running. You'll say, could you do us a treatment for your program? Could you do us a pilot show? You say, look, never mind all that. We are in the middle of a pandemic. It's a lockdown. Put Scotty McClure on live. He's fully trained. He's been around for 28 years. He knows television and radio inside out. He knows all the rules and regulations. Let him pop up live like he does on Facebook Live for half an hour and take texts, emails, phone calls, winner. Nothing else to it. No secrets, no fancy stuff. Winner. What we could maybe do in the middle of it is show some video of beauty spots and I would do a wee bit of commentary, tell a couple of stories. There you go, and you went away. Now, don't tell me you wouldn't watch that. There'd be all sorts of criticism. Oh, far away. You know, that's the stuff that you'd watch. Can I get a shout out uh, for Douglas Dollars, who smashes a munchie box regularly for lunch? A whole munchie box for lunch on his Todd. Does anybody know, can you get a munchie box from the chippy? Peter Connolly, the wonderful Peter Connolly, I'm late, Scotty. It doesn't set me up well for the day if I don't get my full hour's fix of the pop-up in the morning. Peter Connolly, we've just been talking about you. So you've been mentioned in dispatches. You are a local hero. And I was comparing your wonderful poetic prowess with my rather dull See a cow on yonder hillock. Go up and ask for some millock. Now, does that not need a bit of work? It does, doesn't it? I tell you. Morning, Scotty. Eh? Can I get a shout out for Stephen Vergimini of Largs? Cheers. Rory Aitchison. Of course you can. Stephen Vergimini. Good morning. Buongiorno. Uh, glad you're big on Celtic. That's my team says Margaret Sheldon. Absolutely, Margaret. And, of course, I'm equally big on Rangers. So there you go. That's other people's team. Ray Crowther's watching. Dinky do. Morton. Yes, says Stephanie. Fantastic. God is silly. Pardon me, Laz. I have a box of 500 tacks at the ready as we cannot get moving for cyclists. On coastal routes, God and Sterling. That's an awful thing to say. And I know you're joking. There we go. Uh, Finley Morris, are you okay, Gordon? Dinky do, they're talking to each other. He's talking to Gordon Sterling. Willie Drysdale, Dinky do, some brass tacks for getting down to. Willie Drysdale's watching. Tam says, Scotty, after lockdown, you should come out with all the boys. For a meal, we'll treat you. Tam Peden, that is a lovely, lovely thing to say. I thank you. I can remember going out touring Lanarkshire. And we called round the Lanarkshire towns. And I kid you not, a visit from the Queen 
would not have got a bigger crowd. I couldn't believe it. And I said to the people that were sponsoring me, I said, this is, what else is going on? They went, nothing, Scotty, this is for you. And it was just, they were shouting out windies, folk were out shouting out top windies in their vest. And I'm giving them banter back, going, what are you doing half-dressed? It's half two in the afternoon. Le Chaui, Scotty! <laughs> Fantastic, so there you are. Finley Morris, I love this. Tam uh, and Finley, I knew you would enjoy this. It's your kind of thing because it's decent human beings having a bit of banter, having a bit of top crack. Margaret Sheldon, Thomas Pendant, why just the boys? What about us lassies? Absolutely, Margaret Sheldon. If we're going out, we're all going out. Uh, it's all or nothing. It's one for one and all for all. All for one and one for all. Did I get that? All for all. That's good. We'll add that. It's, it's, it's all for one and one for all. And all for all. And one for all. And one, all for all. Aye, that'll do it. What about the wee rover, Scotty? Got to be big on the Albion. The Stirling Albion. Do you know that in about three weeks' time, it's 30 years since I launched the radio station for Stirling and Central Scotland. Stirling and Falkirk and Central Scotland. C Central FM, it was Centre Sound then, and I was the launch managing director, and I remember it well, fantastic. So they were a wonderful, wonderful year of my life. I'm sorry about my friendship circle, but Margaret, you're more than welcome. Tam Peden, you've got a much bigger friendship circle than just your immediate buddies. I know that. The wonderful Brian Hall's watching. Good morning, Brian. Lovely to have you with us in Dinky Doo. Morning, Scotty Dinky Doo, my good man. Sorry, Thomas, says Margaret Sheldon. Not at all. Donald Scott is watching. Welcome, Donald. Lovely to have you with us and Dinky Doo. Do you remember a lovely gentleman called Donald? that used to phone Scotty McClue at Scott FM. He was an absolute gentleman, and he had a soft Highland accent. And Donald used to come on, and he would tell us all sorts of stuff. And we never gave Donald any cheek or anything, because he was an absolute gent, and we had lovely chats. And he was, I think, about 80 then. We had somebody on who was as sharp as a tack, who was 92. Or 94. But Donald came on. I think Donald might have been about 80. And Donald, and I got a lovely message. And said, hi, Scotty. I am Donald's son. It's just to tell you that my father passed away, um, uh, but he loved phoning you on the phone in. Now, these things, guys, I'm telling you this because these are the things that are unseen that go by on a day-to-day -day basis. I get them in via email, via um, all sorts of messages. I'm not on Messenger on this device, but I can uh, push access Messenger on another device. I don't have it here because it interrupts the broadcast as far as I can see. And this is done. And these are the lovely things that come out of the phone in. So there you are. Uh, Peter Connolly, working on a new rhyme for tomorrow, Scotty. But my mate says it will have to be good to beat yesterday. Peter Connolly, I can tell you now, la la, <clears throat> sip of tea, this is important. That is lush. I can recommend a wee cup of Errol Greywell. Wee cup. Danoon pottery at its very finest. Argyle pottery. I can tell you that uh, you would really, really, really have to go some to beat yesterday. Yesterday puts you up there. I know I turned it into a rap, and I hope you have no objections, but it just kind of scanned better. Your iambic pentameter. Look that one up for you. Very famous people have had the iambic pentameter. Margaret Sheldon, you're welcome to come, says Tam Peden. Tam, you're very kind. 
Scotty, says Barry McConaughey. Can I get a dinky do for my little girl who's finally able to brush her teeth herself? Marcy, who is too fantastic. Marcy, you are too. And I'm saying dinky do to you from Scotty McClue because your daddy has asked for that for you. Is that not fabulous? So there we go. And you are too. And you can do your toothy pigs as well. Fantastic. Uh, Scotty, absolutely. There we are, Barry. Margaret Sheldon, thank you, Thomas. There we are. Very kind on here. Cheryl Fields is watching. Margaret Sheldon, you're welcome, Mags. Excellent, Tam. Uh, there we are. Tam says that's a fascist attitude, he's saying, to Gordon Stilling. Gordon Stilling, that's an interesting one. Laying that at your feet, my lord. So there we go. What did you think of Nicola Sturgeon's update yesterday, Scotty? I think she's excellent, Alistair King. Very, very good indeed. And um, we had, as I say, a nutcase on my Twitter feed the other day. Oh, this lockdown is destroying relationships and jobs. It's got to stop. And uh, what's the alternative? There must be an alternative. That was it. I think I told you this one. And some of you, yes, the alternative is death. So there we are. I love uh, the updates. Very, very good. And uh, also on to the other chaps that's there, the new medical officer. And Jason, we like Jason as well. Very good. Morning, Scotty. Hope you're well. Says Jackie McCauley Brody. Jackie McCauley Brody. Now, there is a big name. I am well, and I hope you are well. It's lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo. Wonderful Kenny Hyde has joined us. Kenny Hyde, Dinky Doo. What Kenny Hyde does not know about cars is not worth knowing. Did Lou Grade's son take over from him? Uh, no, his brother. There were two brothers, Lou and Leslie. And uh, they were very, very funny guys. They were great guys. There was a story that probably told by Lou that the two of them had left the office in a rush and gone to a lunch function. And they were standing at the function. And Leslie was uh, standing and he went, oh, no. And Lou said, what's wrong? He said, I forgot to lock the safe in the office, in our office. And uh, Lou said, well, we're both here. <laughs> he was an absolute fun star, and he was still dancing at 80. He came on, I wonder if it was Michael Parkinson's show, and he did the Charleston. Wonderful man. And uh, on the other side of the Pennines, or over the Pennines, was um, Lord Bernstein, uh, Mr. Sidney and Mr. Cecil, Sidney and Cecil Bernstein, who ran Granada Television. In these days, they'd run all the cinemas in Manchester. Fantastic people. And, of course, Coronation Street nearly didn't make it, but the tea lady was watching it, and the producer went back to uh, to Mr. Sidney and Mr. Cecil and said, you've got to give this another go. And that was Coronation Street. So there we are. No, you're thinking of Michael Grade. Michael was uh, Lou's nephew. So there you are. And the other brother was um, Lord Delfont, Bernard Delfont, the impresario. So there we are. So they were a wonderful family. Originally the Vinogradskis, and then uh, they became great. And Michael, of course, made a massive contribution. Michael was a big agent, I think, in America. Uh, and he also smoked cigars. Michael also smoked cigars. And uh, he became the... Um, head of Channel 4, and then he ran the BBC. And he was another great man for entertainment, so there we are. So if I'd managed to get in Friday in front of Michael, he may have, uh, you know, given me a few words of encouragement as well. So there are. I once dropped Michael an email when he took over the BBC, and then he ran the BBC, and then I think he was the chairman of the BBC. And I dropped him an email, and I said... Um, Good luck, you'll be fantastic. And he sent back, I'll do my best. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. 
Uh, someone is pulling the strings in the background, preventing McClure getting back on TV. We demand answers. Absolutely, Tam. Margaret Mackay is watching. Can't hear you, Scotty. No sound. Well, you have to turn that up, Margaret. Well, hang on. Hang on. We're losing power. We're losing power. Buffeting, buffeting. I can't hold it. There we are. Fantastic. There we are. We, uh, are we dropping power there? Can't hear you, Scotty. No sound. There should be sound, Margaret. It must be yours. You must have maybe touched something. Can everybody else hear me? Uh, Stephen Menzies. Thank you. Guys, we're out of time. I've got to go. Have a gorgeous day, a fantastic morning. Stay fabulous, stay beautiful, and stay wonderful. But most of all, stay in, stay home, and stay safe. This is Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo to every one of you. Love you lots. ta la -las.